So, good morning and thanks for joining us today. My name is Florian Engel um, and I'm the Managing Director of More Onion and the Product Lead of Impact Stack. And um, just for those of you who don't know us that well, um, I understand that like many of you um, have been working with us um, from looking at the list of participants, but just for those of you who are sort of new, um, More Onion is the digital mobilization agency behind the product Impact Stack. So today we will be talking um, mostly about Impact Stack and about the usage of uh, the platform um, by um, many of you. Uh, and I'm really looking forward to those um, sort of case studies and, and also hearing from you sort of what, what your experience has been. So the Impact Stack community um, is um, really, uh, and that is something that I, that, that, that I always want to start with, is really about the organizations using the platform. So as, um, as, a, as a company uh, developing software, um, we, we consider it our mission um, to help all these organizations to help you um, maximize impact. So that is what, what uh, the platform is about and that is what we're about as a company. So uh, with that in mind, I also want to welcome all the newer clients. Uh, so uh, looking through the list of, of um, clients joining us in the past uh, 12 months, um, there's actually been a, quite a growth. And whenever, um, whenever new organizations join uh, the Impact Stack community and sign up, what that means is that we can help more organizations create impact. So uh, the other aspect of that is like the more organizations are joining, uh, the more... Um, the more um, budget we are going to have uh, to develop new features in, on the platform and uh, to sort of improve the platform more overall. Because to some degree, um, our product is, uh, you, you can also see our product as a, as a way of cost sharing, really. So rather than developing your own little um, project here or spending money on some custom bit over there, uh, the way that we operate as Impact Stack is uh, that many organizations are sharing the cost and then we can make features available to everyone. So just um, a quick little um, stat. Uh, in the past 12 months, um, the average growth of uh, clients using the Impact Stack platform, and when I say growth in that case, I mean number of supporters they have recruited, um, was 48.29%. Uh, the reason why we always look at that number is because that just shows that organizations are clearly, even on average, uh, growing their own supporter base by at least 50%, and that is great. I mean, um, obviously for small organizations, uh, the percentage number is going to be much higher, and for bigger ones, it, the percentage number is going to be lower. But what that shows is just that the general um, tendency that like organizations are using the platform um, are growing their, their supporter base, and that is that is always great to see. So before we get started, a few points on um, how we operate. So um, many of you will know that uh, we think of Impact Stack as a community-led product, uh, and part of that is also this event. So uh, we we are always um, open to discussing feature ideas. We're always open to having these conversations to hear what um, what you as the users of the platform. Uh, really want to get out of it and how we can do things better um, and at the same time also uh, to to like co-create um, and that means that uh, not just funding but that also means that if we if we develop new functionality we're always on the lookout for organizations who are um, happy to like work with us on this first version to do some some early testing so we can see whether a particular idea really works or how we can fine-tune it a part of that is also that we um, that we always keep our roadmap as transparent as possible. Obviously, uh, the roadmap of a product like Impact Stack that is rather comp complex and and big um, is like a constantly changing roadmap. So it's not like a perfect plan, and that is exactly how it's going to happen, because um, software development um, often comes with not just risk, but also with like unexpected changes in requirements and unexpected changes um, in in the in the sort of technology environment that that we operate in uh, but uh, the roadmap is always publicly available um, and uh, we're also happy for you to like review it and have chat have conversations with us about the roadmap and and how we prioritize certain things and at the moment uh, we are working on the next generation of the platform 
Um, I will be talking about that a little bit, uh, but um, that, that is just so so you know that um, there is like a bigger development effort um, going on that might not be visible, um, um, particularly on the roadmap. We do put some next generation kind of bits on the roadmap, but not everything. So let's get started with what's new. The first thing uh, that you're going to be hearing more about um, in a second is mobile payments. So we have released um, Google and Apple Pay for uh, two uh, payment gateways that, uh, that uh, Impact Stack supports for Braintree and for Stripe. Now, uh, the reason why mobile payments um, are really relevant is you've you've probably noticed uh, the the increased adoption of these um, mobile payments in the past year or so, especially with the pandemic um, and with with the way that like um, mobile phones are, are getting more and more um, sort of convenient for payment. Uh, that is something that that has um, where, where the adoption has been like um, uh, quite noticeable, really. So we want to make sure that you can also use those for for um, donations um, and for donation pages. The um, when we when we released the first version um, as a beta test um, in I, I believe it was August, it was still like from from Apple's side of things a bit unstable to be honest. Uh, but I think we're going to see um, we, as more and more people are starting to use that. I think we're going to see um, these payment methods. Uh, um, adopted even more widely and, and also uh, in a much more stable way um, than they are right now. So this is um, as much as is, it is something to, to test right now and to try with your supporters and with your donation pages. I think it's definitely something that is an investment in the future of, of payments. At this point, a big thank you to Friends of the Earth who have um, not just um, helped fund but also helped um, sort of co-create the, the brain tree integration for, for uh, Google and Apple Pay. You will be hearing more about, um, about this project from Joe um, later today. Another thing that's new, um, maybe not as shiny, but quite important um, is uh, the changes we've introduced to cookie compliance. So cookie compliance is one of these topics uh, that have really um, like they have really become much more important in the in the past year or so. So in, as always, instead of just uh, providing one solution for for cookie compliance, we've worked with clients to identify a, a range of different needs, all the way from very basic implementations um, to quite complicated consent management systems, and we've implemented a few of them. So with Impact Stack, you now have the choice between a range of different like interpretations, quite similar to GDPR. So like depending on how you, your interpretation of uh, the cookie law is, and um, you can choose from a range of options. Um, and we also provide some guidance in the help center. Um, and um, if, you, if you discuss that with our support team. So it sounds quite uh, boring, but it's actually a, a rather complicated piece of work because it's integrated with with Google Analytics integrations and, and things that, that you may otherwise use, but it has to be integrated uh, with every one of these tracking systems in order to also prevent the tracking systems from being activated if the user chooses uh, not to um, agree to cookie usage. A few more features that have been directly requested by clients. Um, and the reason why I wanna show you uh, the list of these, even, even though they might be uh, fairly small, um, the reason why I want to show you some of these features is because um, like we, we often have to say no and we often have to say, sorry, we can't do this at this point in time. But there are certain changes that we, that, like every, every month we make some changes to the platform that are directly requested by clients and, some, and sometimes these might be small little fixes, sometimes these might be entire features. And these, I think, are particularly great examples because um, these are these are the kind of changes that really um, have a have a big impact on the user experience or have a big impact on how you can utilize the system. But um, ideally, they they are built in a way that they are really generic and that they can be repurposed and they can be reused. So the first one is that we've introduced a new field in uh, donation exports. Again, that sounds quite uh, boring, but what, what that really is, 
um, is that like with these um, exports, it's much easier to match the payments from Stripe and SagePay specifically um, with uh, with the with the donation data, and uh, that makes it easier for smaller organizations who don't have like an entire data team to work through these um, through these exports and match things up. The second uh, thing that we've released is internal page titles, which is a feature that allows you to just give a separate title to a page that will not be publicly visible. So in the past, um, that was always the same title. So the the um, the external um, headline of the page was the title that you also saw within the user interface. With this feature, that will be activated upon request. So that is not something that is just available, but if you ask the support team, they will they will be happy to activate it for you. So that is another feature that that um, some of you have asked about a lot um, to make things like um, setting up multiple pages easier and still being able to find the right ones and just being able to organize the pages um, in your way. So another change uh, that um, is just an example of something really small that but that, that ends up uh, making things um, much easier. Um, so we've introduced new fields um, on the contact record of supporters uh, that uh, allow you to automatically save the, the last donation amount and the last the donation recency, so the, the date of the last donation this person has made with the, with the supporter record. Now, the reason why that is interesting is because it makes it, you don't have to go through all the form submissions of donation data. You don't have to go through all the activities or any other data. You can just download the contact data and you have this piece of information in it. The reason why that's interesting is because uh, it makes it much easier to automate supporter journeys based on donation data. So uh, if you wanna quickly drop in the donation amount um, of, of this person, like the last donation this person has made, you can just do that by setting up a matching field in the email marketing system and the data will automatically synchronize. So the another reason is that you, uh, why that's interesting is uh, that you can um, do li a little bit of segmentation within the email marketing system and tailor the emails based on whether they've given five pounds or 50 pounds. Now that, that can make a, a, a massive difference. The other thing is donation recency. You can you can trigger you can automatically trigger um, a sequence of emails uh, in the email marketing tool based on um, the particular point in time. So if if that date is older than like three or four months, you can treat these people differently and you can send them different messages um, ba based on on the recency of their last donation. So that that is just really a way to make it much easier. It's always been possible and we've always had the data, but uh, by putting it on the contact record directly, um, that means that it's just more accessible. Now, for those of you who are um, data enthusiasts, um, this is the sort of uh, functionality that that will be, um, th that we're building for the next generation um, of Impact Stack. So for the next generation of Impact Stack, we're extending the contact record to to have to hold a lot of information like that um, so uh, as soon as you move to the, to the new um, sort of back end for, for data processing um, you will have fields available such as like the the title of the last action the person has taken uh, the title of the first action this person has ever taken so you can tailor uh, communications based on on recruitment data without having to merge um, different types of um, data um, and all of these things, all the way down to like tracking. So where, where, the, where the person has um, originally come from before they, they took their first action, all of that will be available. Um, and, and that makes it much easier to tailor and, and automate journeys. The way that we've come up with this list of, of data that will end up in the contact record, even though it's available in other places, is that uh, whenever um, we've designed journeys as more onion or whenever um, some of our clients have designed journeys and have um, expressed an interest in a particular um, kind of data, um, we've we thought about like whether that that is generic enough that we want to make that available to everyone. And if the answer was yes, it ended up in this spreadsheet and um, it's going to be available for all clients. 
So uh, I understand that data um, in itself is probably not as interesting, but it's more about like the potential. What can you do with that? And how how actionable is that data? How much can you transform that data into like a really personalized experience for your supporters? And that is what, what this is about. Other things that we've done um, that you may have um, seen is that we've introduced a new data set uh, for council leaders. Uh, I believe that will be released within the next few days, but there are a number of clients who are already using it and who have um, who've done some, some wonderful actions uh, using this data set. We've also made a few improvements to the council data sets as a whole, and uh, there's more to come. Um, we are going to completely restructure the council data sets um, and uh, that like uh, Jess is definitely going to keep you posted about that. Um, that, that there's more to come, and uh, council data sets are something that that we that we're that we're quite invested in um, improving over the next couple of months. So obviously, um, with Impact Stack, it's it's been it's been almost twelve months that we've had a meeting like this. So there are way too many changes to this. I did look through all the changes um, of the past 12 months um, and uh, the list is just too long. So I'm not, gonna, I'm not gonna mention all of them. If you're curious, obviously feel free to reach out and we can, we can look through the list and I can share more, but um, we wanna keep this presentation to short enough to sort of still be interesting. So the next generation, that is always the bit that, that I also get very excited about uh, because um, like it, it's it's sometimes difficult or not not quite as tangible as the immediate result. Um, like a, here's a new feature that you can use right now. But the next generation is um, has a lot of potential, and uh, being involved in the development um, of that um, is is really exciting. So the way that we think of uh, this process is um, as if we were riding a bike and replacing certain parts of that bike as we're riding. Um, so what that means is, um, obviously, uh, Impact Stack is a, is a service that, um, and we're not going to interrupt the service for, for um, any changes. But what we are doing is that we're taking out individual pieces, we are redeveloping it, um, those pieces, and then we're building it um, right into the platform again. So in many cases, you won't even notice the difference, because it's the systems and the back end that are running. Um, so, uh, but, but um, it will it will create many new opportunities. Um, and so it's, it's not like, while you may not notice certain changes initially, that is a good thing because that means that, that, that the rollout has been very smooth, but eventually you're gonna see all the different options uh, that are gonna um, appear and uh, eventually also the, the user interface will change um, quite dramatically. So the way that you will benefit in the long term from this is not just that, you, in eventually um, it's going to be a, um, a, a new generation of the product that is really well designed and really, really well thought through. It also means that in future uh, to all the systems that are new, we will be much faster when it comes to making changes in, to those systems. Because of the way that we've chosen to build the next generation, it is much more flexible and uh, when, when it comes to changes. So the reason why that is great for you is because if you do request changes, um, it's going to be um, much faster for us to deliver and much cheaper. So really, we have more time to focus on building new features um, and, and, and doing all sorts of um, other things um, because, um, yeah, because the pace of changes um, is different. It's much faster. The other thing is um, it will be even more open and even more like even easier to integrate. So we always think of our platform as one of the platforms that sit um, next to other systems that you're using, whether that would be your CRM system, whether that would be your email marketing system, your website. So Impact Stack is always going to be um, collaborating ideally with, with other systems. And we want to make that we want to take that even further. We want to make sure that that is really um, so easy that you don't even have to think about it. And the openness is that we want to make it much easier for others to build on top of our platform. At the moment, um, that 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 is is possible, but it's it's sometimes a bit difficult. But by uh, making many APIs available, 
um, it will not just be possible to, to uh, work with the data that you collect, but it will also be possible to work with all sorts of other areas, such as the, the data sets that we have, the political data sets, or um, even, even down to like um, the, using our form system for all sorts of things. Um, the next generation will also be more flexible and customizable. So right now there are certain areas where we can't really offer customization because the, the system is, is built in a particular way that um, it, it doesn't lend itself to this type of customization. In many areas, we do a lot of customization already, um, as you probably know, but in some areas it's, it's a bit more difficult to do. So with the next generation, we will be more flexible to offer all types of customizations. And the last point is, uh, the, the, and that is something that I really want to highlight, is like we're going to be spending much more time on new feature development. Because as we're redeveloping the platform, we are going to need wheels on the platform, like if it's a bike. So, so we definitely have to replace the wheels. But um, you might think, okay, it's like we already have that feature. <laughs> we already have wheels. But these are, they are really um, important to be able to build on top of. Um, so we like right now we're going to have to we're still in the process of replacing many of these components but um, the way that you will benefit um, is that we are going to release a lot of new types of features um, once we're done with this process so what are the steps uh, the way that we are um, replacing parts is that we we've started with data flow after forms uh, then we're replacing the technology around forms then we are replacing the technology about like landing pages and content management related features all the way down to things like share functionality then we will have the advanced form builder so that will be the interface on top of the form system then uh, we will integrate the the target data sets and tactics um, that is already um, part of the new uh, generation uh, but it, it will be integrated um, into the, the whole um, next generation platform at this point and towards the end we will integrate payments and donation features the reason why that is towards the end is because um, we're taking like a step-by-step -step approach so if we can um, if we can create a version of the platform that we can already release to a number of different clients then um, we will take that approach because that just makes things um, much easier and uh, payments is one of these things that um, that can also be very complicated so the, the different types of payment integrations that we offer, um, that is just a, a, a lot of, like a wide range of different integrations um, to migrate. So what does that mean in terms of timelines? So we are going to release a, a petition only, very reduced platform that is entirely built on the next generation um, at some point in May, 2022, so next year. The, this, this will be the first time where all these components, the, the new layer for data processing, the new form tool, and a reduced set of content management and landing page type functionality will come together into one platform that will be used uh, for a, an international campaign. And this is the platform that we will also use for, for any sort of like petition only and especially coalitions um and and like these kind of international big um, campaign launches later that year we're going to add all campaigning functionality to that uh, to that uh, feature set so that includes email to target that includes um the the types of actions um, that we will be hearing about uh, today um from from shelter and so so that is the point where we're towards the end of of next year we're going to offer the migration to some clients uh, who don't use the donation functionality, uh, but who would like to already uh, get started with, with like the entire platform um, on the next generation. And the payment features are something that we're going to be implementing in the the, the, the first months of 2023, 20, uh, um, which means that we can then uh, sort of finalize the the migration. So another thing, talking about the stuff that we've already done around the next generation. So we have um, released the first um, API-based CRM integration with Salesforce and the next generation of the platform. Um, big shout out to uh, Trustle Trust. Um, we've been working with um, on, on that particular integration. 
Um, so the way that this works is that it, it has an almost real-time um, handover of data from impact stack to Salesforce. And uh, the biggest part of the integration is reusable. So what that means is that we've built it in a very generic way that allows us to, to, to build custom uh, Salesforce integrations on top of that. So depending on the, the reason is that like Salesforce is typically not one system. It, it's, it's always heavily customized. So our integration with Salesforce also has to be customized to some degree because different organizations use it in a very different way. But uh, this integration is now available for other clients. It's not like a MailChimp integration where we can just switch it on and it will work. It does need a bit of a budget and a bit of work because of these customizations that you have um, within Salesforce. Uh, but if you're interested in that, feel free to reach out. Uh, we've, um, we now have um, almost six months of experience with a live um, usage of this system. And so far it's been absolutely fantastic. Another thing, um, um, and uh, thank you for four powers for sort of like um, working on this and, and also testing it a lot. So another thing that we've released um, is that we've released an extended version of the, the webhook. So the, the kind of um, API that we've had uh, for a long time where you can pull out data um, out of impact stack in real time. Um, the reason why I mentioned four pause is because we've developed a, an extended uh, documentation of, of the webhooks. And for pause was the first organization to really implement um, them in a way that um, that was much more comprehensive. Uh, organizations such as Friends of the Earth UK have, have been using webhooks, sorry, have been using webhooks um, for many, many years. Uh, but this time around, uh, we realized that we, we absolutely have to like um, also test the documentation around it and, and make sure that that is um, much more, um, much easier to use for, for developers. The other thing that we've developed on the new platform that we've already released at some point in um, in in the spring is the first real time uh, synchronization um, of subs of email marketing subscriptions between uh, a platform that's now called Optimizely. So Optimizely used to be a split testing tool only. They've now extended and uh, their, their offering, and they also offer an email marketing system. Um, so with that, um, a big thank you to WWF because they have provided the, the, the funding to make and we're the first client to use this integration. So we've um, we've been working with them um, to make make sure that this next generation of email marketing integrations um, is make, make goes beyond what we already have. Um, and um, some of the things that that were possible are like custom logic. So treating new subscribers differently to existing supporters and making sure that like the data flow for each of these groups is, is different. And also to make sure that like all the data syncs back um, to impact stack in real time. So that is also something that is really important to make sure that um, the two systems um, talk to each other um, and are always kept up to date. And uh, the last thing uh, that I that I want to um, um, talk about is uh, the, the, the first forms on the next generation. So as I've mentioned, in, in May 2022, we're going to release the first version that is going to be available for petitions only. Um, and that uh, the, the reason why we do that is because um, this first version of the form tool is only going to have like a limited set of fields. So the functionality will be a bit limited. Uh, but it's it's a first step, um, and the the reason why that is special for those of you who are a bit more technically minded is because the entire form will be JavaScript based, so it will only run in your browser, and this JavaScript will then eventually communicate with our forms backend. So the reason why that is fantastic is because it makes it much easier to embed it into any page really using JavaScript. So you you can use iframes and we will provide an iframe version that that is really uh, quite simple. But with the JavaScript, you have um, a lot of control over the way that you embed it and the type of functionality that you will have. And of course, we will have an API for receiving this data in the back end. Um, and validating uh, the information and, and all of that. So that is that is really like a massive piece of functionality that we've been working on for quite a while. And the first version of that will only have like a limited set of fields, but it will already be uh, used. Um, and we're, we're, we're probably gonna see like um, a couple of million uh, data records come through 
um, within the next um, six to eight months. So uh, the last bit around functionality that I want to briefly update you on is the new standard themes. Um, as you might know, we've introduced um, a new way of, um, of, of how themes work um, pretty much about a year ago. So uh, I wanted to give you a quick update on how that is going. The main thing, other than a complete redevelopment of the th of the way that themes work in general, um, that, that has many different advantages. Uh, the main thing that um, that, that I would say um, sets standard themes apart is that you can choose the different layout of the page, so you can really uh, change the look and feel of the page based on on um, what what sort of traffic comes to that page or how you want to present that content, um, and that can have a massive um, like that, that can really change the conversion rates. Um, so the page layout variations that we offer, are that there's the default page layout variation that is the on, on desktop, that is the typical two column layout um, that you're probably quite familiar with. But then um, you have a wide range of different options on how you present an image and how the different elements and components on the page uh, will change behavior based on that. So the, we've we've um, we have uh, we now have live uh, clients using all of these different page layout variations, but the one thing that we have uh, changed that, that that I think is a rather major change is that we we've introduced a setting that allows you to change the placement of the form on mobile, so you can choose to either include it uh, at the top of the form or at the bottom of the page, so the the form depending on the page layout. Uh, can ch still change position within the mobile layer. So that is really important um, to, to provide you with a full control over the mobile design, because um, as you can see from these little, um, these little um, almost icons or little drafts, these are def desktop versions, but we do have a mobile optimized version. And by, by exposing this option to you as the user, um, you can you can make that choice and you can say, I have an intro sentence um, above the form, so I will put the form at the very top of my page on mobile. Um, or you can say, I will include various links or sticky buttons that will lead the user down to the form on mobile. Um, so that is, that is now a choice that you can make. Excuse me. So in the past um, months, we've rolled out uh, new themes to more than 20 clients. And the other thing that we've also created is the fundraising bonus pack um, that will be released in January. The fundraising bonus pack, um, we get, we'll get to that in a second, um, but we've also implemented a number of small fixes and improvements because whenever, whenever we release new features and you start using them, um, you give feedback and that way we can improve things. So that is also a way of like, um, we always want to learn from you and like that is really uh, useful whenever you, you give us uh, feedback. The other thing that we've done is that we've implemented this system for premium themes. So these are the themes that are completely, uh, that have a completely custom design. So how, is, uh, how are these new themes better than, than the last theming system we had? So standard themes allow really fast rollout in comparison. So the, the, we, we have rolled out some of these themes within two weeks. So the, um, the, the time it takes to build these themes um, is really much shorter um, than it used to be. The other thing is that um, I've been talking about these page layout variations and the, like how flexible those are. Um, and these are now very affordable. So uh, it used to be the way that like, if you wanted something that is a bit more striking and that has like very different um, options in terms of how, to, how the page is displayed, you would have to work on like a custom theme um, that is like, yeah, uh, which is quite expensive because you have all these developers working on, on the custom functionality for you. Now we can just um, include that in the standard offering um, and that is, that is great. Then we have a number of different new optimized elements. Like it's really easy to add these little sticky buttons um, on desktop and mobile or sticky forms. And generally like we've standardized a lot of, of 
elements that you can just use and you can just drop into your page. And the last point I wanted to highlight is that um, these themes are future proofed so they can be migrated to the next generation of the platform without any major changes. And the reason why that is important is because eventually everyone's going to be migrated to this new platform. And uh, that, that also means that everyone's going to have to think about themes. So um, what you get if you if you agree uh, to, to, to work with us on a new standard theme is that we adjust the colors, we adjust the logo and the typography. So what you can see here is an overlay um, for, for, I believe it's Trussell Trust. Um, so these are the little overlays that you can place on thank you pages, on share pages. Um, to, to place multiple call to actions in, in a sequence. Uh, what you also get is like one a default layout is, is free. So if you switch to the new um, theming system, um, like the, and you just want the standard default layout, then there's, there's no cost. Um, afterwards, every new theme that you want um, will be, uh, depending on the, on the set of features, um, the, the cost starts at 950. So the fundraising packs um, are like available now or January. Um, what, what they allow you to do is um, add little payment icons underneath your form. So that way you can, you can show the user um, what kind of uh, payment methods you accept. And the other thing is um, like around gift aid, um, we have a gift aid calculator, but, but through this, um, it will be displayed in a much nicer way and uh, our team will help you set it up. So uh, that way you can present gift aid in a slightly more user-friendly way um, and you can promote it uh, to, to increase the, the level of gift, uh, gift aid opt-ins that you get. Now, everyone will eventually be migrated at some point in the year 2022. So every single client will get a new standard theme unless you work with us uh, to, to get a, a new standard theme in a particular um, with a particular set of features, um, we will at some point reach out to you um, and agree on a on a point where we will uh, create this new theme for you. Please, um, if you do have any plans, uh, communicate those um, and, and share those with us as early as possible, because as you can imagine, there's already quite a long list of clients who, who want this um, the system and who want uh, to be... Uh, who want uh, the, these new themes to, to, to um, as soon as they can. So please do reach out uh, and make sure that we can plan ahead. So even if, if you say um, we're happy with the September uh, change in themes, please let us know as soon as you can. The other thing I wanted to briefly mention is as always, uh, to those of you who are clients, uh, please uh, get back to us on the sort of year end special. So we always offer to, um, um, if, if you pay for a year in advance, um, that we give you a bit of a discount. This really just saves a lot of administrative work and it saves you the hassle of handing on the invoices. We don't have to create all these invoices every month. So um, please do just get back to us um, about that um, as soon as you can. So thank you. That's it from my end. Um, and with that, um, I'm happy to take any questions. <laughs>